warning, the figure that I'm reviewing today is a hentai figure, and so there will be nudity. This video may not be suitable for a younger audience or anyone that gets offended by such content. In saying that, you are watching the censored version. If you want to see the uncensored version, you can click this box here at any time and it will take you to a new video. The video that you'll be taken to will be age restricted, so you have to be 18 or over and you have to be logged in to YouTube and your Google Plus account. This video is for reviewing purposes and to inform the people who may want to buy this figure and so they get to have a better look at it before they buy. So with all that said and done, let's get on with the review. So today I'm reviewing Odinon Illustration Shiho Kujo 1 6 scale figure by Daiki Kogyo. This figure was a pre-order and it came with an exclusive Ami Ami bonus which was an A5 character acrylic plate. So as you see this is the plate and I'll be showing you this closely a little bit later. This figure cost me 17,280 yen or about 230 New Zealand dollars, including shipping. A little bit of bonus information about this character. She is an original character done by Odinon, who is a hentai doujinshi manga artist. A lot of Odinon's characters do look similar, and I thought that she was a part of some of the manga that was online. But, as it turns out, she is an original character for this figure line. So, without further ado, let's have a look at the box that she's in, and have a look at the character and the acrylic plate. So, let's get into it. Okay, so here's the bottom of the box. We'll flip her over and have a look at the top. As you see, there's the Daiki sticker. This is how you know that it's an official figure. We'll open her up. Try and not cut myself. That would be great try and also get this box open. I'm terrible at opening figure boxes. We're finally into it and as you see here once we get this flap open there is a checkered pattern on the flap. It's the same as on the inside which is nice to see. We'll pull her out and the first thing that I notice is that it is quite a heavy figure. She's rather sturdy. So the first thing you want to check for is the sellotape because on official figures there will be a lot of sellotape. If there's no sellotape and you're buying this supposedly new then there's a chance that it could be a fake. So it's the same with inside, uh, you'll find a lot of sellotape. So first off we've got the base there that's secured in the piece of plastic. Next we've got the plastic that's over Kujo and we've got some little pieces sellotaped into there. And then we've got the figure herself. She is wrapped up in a lot of plastic which is nice to see. We don't want her to be damaged at all. And then as you see she comes with a little bra as well. So first off, we'll have a look at the base. It's just your typical base. If you flip it over to the back, you can see that it says Odin on. And then the little pegs that will go into her feet. Next up are these little bits here. They go into her legs when she's not wearing her garter belt. Next is the bra. As you see, there are some ties up there at the top. Flip it over and you can see a bit more of the ties. And it is see-through plastic. And now we've got the figure herself. As I said before, she is very well packaged. A lot of plastic, which is great because we don't want her to be damaged. We're going to have a little bit of a problem of getting into this uh, plastic because some of it's under her hair. I didn't realize that you can actually take her head off. So that was a little bit difficult to get rid of that plastic without taking her head off. But at the moment, we'll just take off her arm and that way we can get rid of the plasticine that's underneath the sleeve. It's great to see that there is some plastic under the sleeve. So even the arm is secure from being damaged. So we'll just take her sleeve off and as you see 
this is how it pegs together and there's her arm it was rather difficult to figure out how to take off her jersey it comes off in a rather different way it comes off diagonally instead of being around the back I actually had to take it aside and have a closer look to make sure that I was taking it off right so as you see it contours to her body very well you can see the indentations of her butt and it's a very flexible plastic even more plastic over her body and in the end I had to force off the plastic that was over her stomach and over her boobs because they were just very difficult to get off if you don't take off her head her head is fastened on there very securely so when you do take her head off you can apply a lot of force so as you see at the back here, she has a lot of little bits and pieces on her garter belt. Have a closer look at the garter belt and there's the part that goes on her bum. It's a love heart. There's the part that's between her legs. And this part there goes into her legs. Lots of little ties and it's a really nice looking garter belt actually. And so here's a closer look at her with the bra on. It fastens on the sides of the garter belt. It was rather hard to put on. You actually have to take off her arms to put this on. As you see, the bra doesn't actually go over her nipples. They fasten onto her nipples, which is rather cute. Since I've taken off her arms, they seem to be a bit wobbly, which is a bit of a shame, but it might just be a thing with this figure I don't know and as you see there that doesn't really come around to the other side it just sits there in between her legs right so we'll take off her arms there was some plastic underneath that arm because obviously I was meant to take off both of the arms and then take her plastic off once her head was off if we look closely at her genitals they are rather nice they are very detailed there's some pink coloring in there and there's even some pubes look at her bum and it's a nice shape let's have a close look at her face it's a very shy looking face she has a nice collarbone and looking at her hair there is a lot of detail and different shades of brown in her hair which is quite nice if we look at her leggings they have a rose mosaic on it which is really nice and then there's some bows at the back having a closer look at her arms and hands they are very well detailed it's a nice soft paint job and the fingernails are painted which is really nice they're just a nice pink the other arm now and there's some shading underneath her hand and there's the nails that are painted again all in all her arms and the whole body is very nicely painted here's the jersey there's a lot of definition and movement in this jersey as you see it goes over her boobs nicely and it shows off her bum I really like the sides of this jersey how there's a bit of a kind of knitted look here's the side where you put it all together so here she is she's got her jersey on without the garter belt the one great thing about this figure is that there's so much variety. You can have her with the jersey on, with the garter belt on, or if you don't want the garter belt on, you can just have her jersey with no underwear on at all. It just is great to mix and match. 
The one thing that I'm really thankful about is that her jersey doesn't look overly plasticky or rubbery. They've put some decent shading in the paint job which is great to see. When we have an even closer look you can see all the extra detail that's in that jersey. And from this angle here this is where it looks like that she's pulling at the jersey. So it makes it look like that she's trying to hide her bum and making it look like that she's wearing something underneath it at least. I'm not a huge fan of the colour of her leggings. It would have been nice if it was more of a skin tone colour or a black. Looking at her shoes, she is wearing some very high heels. This is a very leggy character and she is very tall. She has a lot of leg. Looking at the back, I love the little bow ties that are sitting there. And again, all the wrinkles that are in that jersey just gives it a lot of movement. Here she is in her underwear. She's got the bra and the garter belt on. It looks very sexy and very sensual. The one thing that I find rather annoying is that the tie that is at the back isn't completely centered. For some reason it's off to the left slightly. I'm not sure why they made it like that, but it's a bit of a shame that it's not centered. It kind of bugs my eyes. The one thing that I absolutely love about this garter belt is that it has that rose mosaic that her leggings have. It's great that they match, but it's a real shame that the bra doesn't match with the rose mosaic. It would have been an extra nice touch if they went and put that mosaic on the bra to just make it a full matching set. I also love how the nipples just poke out slightly from the bra and how it just kind of hangs off of it. And here she is completely naked. I absolutely love the paint job on her skin. It's so soft and it's just so light and delicate. She's very curvy. She has a bit of an hourglass look. She's not a plus sized figure, but she's not overly skinny either, which is really nice to see. She looks like she's a mature woman, maybe in her 30s. So as you see she has that shy look on her face and she's trying to cover everything with her hands. It's a bit of a shame that you can't change out her arms for other arms so then she's not covering things when she's naked but that's just a bit of a nitpick on my part. She has very perky butt cheeks and as you see she has some pubic hair which looks really nice. Again looking at that rose mosaic on the leggings, it's beautifully done. If you look at her back, it's slightly arched and there's a bit of shadowing to make it look a bit more realistic which is nice. I love the shape and the colour of her nipples, they're very high she has a very high look to her. Next on to the Ami Ami exclusive plate that I got. As you see she is all packaged nicely in some plastic. These little bits here are metal and they're rather easy to put on. On the back, as you see, there's some instructions to tell you how to put it all together, just in case you're not sure. And there we have the picture itself. It's acrylic, so it's not going to be as weak as glass. And here's the picture itself. It's a lovely picture. It's the same one that's on the back. The coloration on the leggings do kind of look more like the skin tone that I was hoping for than the colour that they've put on her legs in the figure. Which is a bit of a shame, but again that's another nitpick of mine. It's a decent size. 
it's not too big but not too small which is nice I do really love this picture she looks sexy and cute and sensual so I've had this figure for a wee while now for a few weeks and currently I'm dressing her in her jersey I absolutely love this jersey on her I think it's really well detailed and I love how she is trying to pull it down at the back it just looks really cheeky and really shy in saying that I do like her fully naked and I also like her underwear that she wears not as much but it is still nice to mix and match once you've had her wearing her jersey for a while and then you decide to take it all off and she's naked so it's nice to have some variety the other thing is is that she's very interactive you don't have to just have her like this with her garter belt underneath you can also take it off and the other great thing is is that if you've got some nosy friends around and they're looking at your figure collection most of the time they will turn it up like this to see what's underneath and the great thing about Cujo is that they are going to get a bit of a shock because she has no knickers on. The interesting thing with Cujo is that she has a bit of a backstory. On the Amy Amy website there's a bit of a blurb. Shiho Cujo is an immoral married woman who made a mistake with a young adulterer. Shiho says to the young man, do I have to walk outside in these clothes? Obviously being embarrassed about uh, what she's wearing and that's why she's holding the front and the back of this figure to emphasize how embarrassed she is. Enjoy Shiho Kujo, an immoral wife who will keep going back to the same place even if her skin turns red with embarrassment every time. So pretty much this figure is trying to sell you on the fantasy of the cheating housewife also known as Neto Rare, a word I didn't even know existed until I watched one of Sugar Punch's many harem reviews. Make sure to go and give Sugar Punch some love, I'll make sure to leave the link in the description below. Now if this isn't your type of fetish, I don't blame you, it's not mine either. And she doesn't have to be that type of character. If you look at her, she looks shy but somewhat confident, so you know, she could be that type of uh, character as well. So starting with the jersey, the seams can be kind of visible, which is a real shame. They don't seem to lock into place as well as what I would have hoped. Although with a bit of fiddling around you can get it to close as closely as possible. There is still a bit of a gap which is a shame but the way that I've got it is pretty much as close as I could get it to being closed. Also the pegs that are in the seams can come out. They're not actually attached to the jersey. They're individual little pegs and there is a right and a wrong way to put them back in because if you have it that you see a little knob sticking out from it that's the right way to have it if you don't see the little knob then you know you've got it the wrong way around and you could damage the jersey and the seam if you're not careful this is easily remedied by just taking it out and putting it in the right way don't force it another thing that I wanted to mention is that on the back of the shoulder there is a ghost seam line. This is not an actual seam to open and close. It's just from the manufacturing of the jersey and it's very noticeable when you take the jersey off of Cujo. It does bend. So be very careful because if that breaks then you're, you're buggered. It's going to ruin this beautiful jersey. <laughs> It's very noticeable on the inside of the jersey and it would take some force to rip it open but just be aware that it's there and not to be too forceful. The last thing about the jersey that I'd like to mention is that there's a little tab down here. It is impossible to close this. It was closed when I took it out of the package but as soon as you open it you can't get it back together which is a shame. Unfortunately, if you're looking close up, it is noticeable. It would have been great if it was underneath her hand because at least then she's covering it. But that's not the case, it's right next to it. So when you look close up, it's right there and it's a glaring fault unfortunately. Next I'd like to talk about the bra. It's very unique and unfortunately reasonably difficult to put on. 
when I first saw it, I didn't realise that you can take off Cujo's arms. So I made it a bit more difficult than I really had to because you take off the arms first and then you clip it in. It's still reasonably hard to put it on because it has a funny way of clipping in. It's right at the side, so that's a bit of a shame. The bra is definitely the weakest part of this figure. It doesn't have the rose motif like on her garter belt and on her leggings. It would have been really nice if they had that rose motif because it would have made it stand out. I do like her having the bra on, but I'd much rather her uh, have it off. Speaking of the garter belt, I do like the garter belt. I really like how it has a rose motif on it. And it is a bit of a shame that on the back, it's not symmetrical. It's not centered, so it looks really awkward. And the other thing is, is that the little triangle bits that meant to clip into Cujo's legs, one of them seems to have a bit of a defect. It doesn't clip in as such. I don't know if it's just with this garter belt and this figure, or if it's a manufacturing error with all the Cujos. So just be aware of that, that if you have one of those little things that go into a leg and it doesn't go in and it keeps popping out, that's why. Another thing that's a shame with this garter belt is that the part that goes between Cujo's legs is damaged. It's a bit deformed and warped. I don't know how this happened. It looks like it happened before it was packaged because when I opened it, it looked like that. And it's a real shame because it doesn't look as nice when it's sitting on her when it's so wonky. I don't know how to fix this. I haven't looked it up. But if anyone knows how to fix this type of thing, please leave it down in the comments below because I would love to be able to make sure that it looks as nice as possible. The garter belt also has plastic tags that run along the edge, which is a real shame. I mean, it's easy to fix, but it's something that I wouldn't expect on a mid to high end figure. I mean, she wasn't cheap. The studs that go into Cujo's legs are individually made they're meant to go in certain parts of her leg. So if you go to put one in and it doesn't fit, then you know that you've got the wrong stud and you have to look carefully to make sure that it can actually go in. Cujo's hair is really nice because the way that it's sculpted conveys a lot of movement. Also, when you look up close, the paint job has a lot of shading. This is definitely the least anime-esque figure that I own, especially if you look at Cujo's eyes. She doesn't really have that big anime eye look. In saying that, she does still look like a cartoon. The one thing that I was really worried about buying this figure is the way that her mouth looks. It kind of gave me a sex doll feeling, but now that I've got her, I don't feel that way. It's a bit more cheeky instead of creepy. When you look at her nipples, they are reasonably high. Especially if you're comparing them to Misao's nipples, whose are reasonably low. They both came from the same manufacturer. There's nothing really wrong with this. It's a nice look. It definitely gives her a high fantasy vibe. Her head is removable, and make sure that you remove her head before you remove her arms, because you don't want to damage anything. Also, her head is fastened on there quite well. It would make you think that you shouldn't remove it, but it is removable, trust me. So you have to be a bit firm with it, firm to rough. So don't be surprised if you're sitting there kind of holding her ankles and yanking the head because that's how I had to remove it. Please be careful when removing her head when it comes to her hair. She does have some parts of her hair that are loose and they flow outwards. So it would be really easy for you to squish it or damage it in some way if you're not holding your hand in the right position. Another thing to keep in mind is that you want to put her jacket on before you put her head back on. I say this because her hair actually overlays the back of the jacket. You could probably put the jacket on afterwards but I would really suggest putting it on first and then putting her head on just so then you don't damage anything. Also the hair can slip under the jacket so just make sure that it's over the top. It looks nicer this way anyways. 
One thing that I find rather strange is how weird her hand is. It's rather large compared to the rest of her body. Also, her hand is so big that when you have her jacket off, she is covering her genitals. And it doesn't help with the placement of her hand. I get what they're trying to do because she's trying to cover things because she's all shy. But it would have actually been nice if they maybe had an extra arm that you could have put on when she's naked. So when she's sitting like this, she has her hand down there because she's trying to cover everything and oh no, I'm not wearing any underwear underneath this. And then when she's naked, maybe they could have had one that has her arm coming down next to her. I don't know, that's just a little nitpick there. But it's just a real shame that when you've got her naked, you don't get to see everything. It's definitely one way to frustrate horny otaku. The fact that she has pubic hair really makes it feel a bit more mature. It's a really nice look. And I love her genitals. They're sculpted really well. The pubic hair definitely makes her look more mature and classy. I must say, she has a really nice looking butt. And if you're a leg person, she has legs for days. So you will love this. Going on to the Ami Ami exclusive bonus, it's definitely a nice bonus. It's a shame that it's not the full picture like on the back of the box. You can definitely get the feel of what Odinon was trying to do with this character. It's a really nice illustration. But as I said, it's just a shame that it's not a full picture like on the back of the box. It only stops there, unfortunately. I would like to see all her legs. Is it really worth the extra 1,500 yen? That's really down to the individual. I like this plate and the figure is a beautiful figure by itself so if you want to save a little bit of money then you don't have to get the exclusive Ami Ami bonus but I like myself exclusive stuff so you know extra stuff is always good. <laughs> Overall I love this figure. She's beautiful, she's a bit sultry, she's shy and She's just a beautiful figure, and I must say, I do love having the exclusive. So that was my figure review for Shiho Kujo. What do you think of this figure? Do you think that you'll pick up one, or do you have one? Let me know in the comments below, I'm looking forward to reading them all. While you're there, please make sure to give this video a big like, and share it out to all your friends, I'd really appreciate it. And if you haven't already, please go and have a look at the rest of my channel. I do anime recommendations, anime news twice a week, and I've got plenty of other anime content on there, so I'm sure you'll find something interesting to watch. If you want to see what I'm up to and say hello, I'm on social media. I've got a Twitter and a Facebook, and I'm online constantly, especially on Twitter these days, so make sure to come like me and follow me on there. And if you want to see more from me and more videos like this, then please make sure to subscribe for a wide range of anime content. From Moe to Mika, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye!